Okay, so we are here now. Uh, we've made quite a few different live loops that utilize different data structures like arrays and rings to do different things with our samples and give a lot more interesting variety and complexity. So here I have just a pretty standard ring of two sounds that are going back and forth. Here I have a array that I stored a bunch of different samples into a variable and I'm now just randomly choosing from that array. Here I have uh, a sample that I pitched up with the rate to give it a different quality so it's more percussive sounding and then change the rhythm using a ring with a sleep value. Here I'm using uh, a ring that changes the pitches of the sample to create sort of a melody and then also using dot look to add an additional ring for my sleep. So just to remind you what it sounds like. All right, so now these are all samples that I've been using. So now I'm gonna make a live loop uh, and I'm gonna call this my melody. Again, I don't I can call them whatever I want, okay? And in this, actually, I'm gonna do this outside. I'm gonna do use synth uh, and I'm gonna do D try. For now, okay. So I'm going to do play. So now I'm going to make a scale. So if you remember, the syntax for scale is we write scale, and then inside parentheses we need to first give it a starting note. So I'm going to do E4. You could do a number as well. So I think that would be the same as like 64. So I could do that, and then it gives you this whole drop down uh, of different scales that we can choose. So I'm going to just choose a regular minor scale. I'm going to show you one more argument we can add now to play scale, and that is something called num underscore octaves. Okay, now this, instead of just going like if it's a major scale, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, this would continue, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. So it would give you more notes. They're all in the same scale, but now you have sort of lower notes and higher notes within that scale. Okay. Um, so here I'm going to do dot choose and let's go sleep uh, 0 0.5 here. So now it's just going to choose random notes from this scale through as it plays. Okay, I'm going to turn the amp down on that a bit. Okay, so that's that's all well and good. So I have some melody now, but it's just random notes over and over and over again. So if I wanted to do a melody, maybe let's say like a eight note melody, I'm gonna use eight dot times do inside of my live loop. So I have eight dot times, so it's gonna give me eight notes, but just this enough isn't gonna do it. Because if we listen, <laughs> Still, it's not giving me the same eight notes over and over and over again. It's not giving me that same pattern. So what I also need is this use random seed. Okay, so use underscore random underscore seed, and I just put in a number there, and now I run it. Okay, so now I have a, a melody, a repeated pattern of notes that I do. If I don't like that melody, I can always change the number for my use random seed. All right, so I'll pick that. One thing I'm just gonna point out, make sure your use random seed goes before the eight dot times do, not after, okay? Because if you do it after, listen to what happens. Just get the same note because it's resetting every time to this random seed. The first time, okay, start with this note. Next time, okay, start with this note. So it's always gonna start with that first note of the pattern if you put it after the eight dot times do, okay? So now I have a melody, all right? So one last thing I'm gonna show you here, and this is something new. This is called a knit, okay? So very quickly, I'm gonna write out a, a ring here, okay? Ring, I, let's say I wanna play the same bunch of notes over and over and over again, right? So let me make a live loop here. I'm gonna call this my bass. Okay, uh, let's do a bass synth here. I'm gonna do the chip bass. 
as part of that. Okay, so here I have, let's say I want to play the same thing over and over and over again. I'm just going to put a little bit of space underneath so I can sort of slide up here. And then let's say I'm just going to sleep for one. All right, so if I run it. Okay, now I could just write play for you, but let's say I want to now have two different notes. I want 40 to play four times and 47 to play four times. So I'd have this. Okay, so that's fine. That would work. I'm just, so now though, let me show you a, a different way to do this. Okay, so let me, I'll just comment this out. So I'm gonna do the same thing with something called a knit. So a knit, K-N-I-T, right, works uh, similar to a ring in that it will always repeat itself, but it's used for playing multiple values uh, in repetition. So in this case, let's say I wanna play the value 40. If I wanna play it four times, I write the value 40 and then the number of times I want it to play, which is four, okay? And then if I want another value, I could write 47, and if I wanted to play four times, I would write four again. So basically you have to give two arguments for each value you want to play. You need to give the value or the note or whatever you want to play and then the number of times you want it to happen, okay? So this just makes it a little more efficient and if I play it this way, you'll hear it does exactly the same thing. can now get rid of this ring and so my code just looks a little neater now instead of having a bunch of the same notes in a ring like that okay one more thing maybe I'll do I'll just make another ring here of 0.5 and 0 0.5 and then dot look just to give it a little more uh, interest here uh, as far as rhythm is concerned so here's all the code that I have now <laughs> So even, you know, I've got quite a few loops going here, but they're all doing something different. They all have a lot more dynamic quality, a lot of variation, complexity, uh, without me having to write a whole bunch of lines of code inside these loops, okay? And since the loops are constantly updating using things like rings and dot chews and nits, uh, and scales are gonna just give you so many more options, all right? So that covers this lesson. Um, I have included this sort of rundown of all the things I just talked about here. Uh, so scales, nits, uh, using rings for sleep values, dot look, using arrays of samples and stuff like that. So it's all here, everything I just went over. Here's the checklist for the assignment. So again, this is now an option if you're choosing to do this for the music engagement assignment. Uh, just make sure you're hitting all of these check marks in order to receive credit for that assignment, okay? I'm really looking forward to what you're doing. So far, the last assignment, the live loops were great. Really enjoyed that. So looking forward to uh, you guys adding some more stuff to those projects. All right, so see you next time.